So of course, uh, we never want to spend too much time looking back, especially when talking to students, because the world is in front of you. Um, but one th point I wanted to make, and this has always been true, and is never reflected adequately in any rewards that a person might receive, and that is that um, when good work gets done, it almost always gets done first in a powerful research community of um, very friendly and very critical colleagues who know how to argue the right way. So as you're looking ahead for yourself, finding these people in general is critical and finding them in particular is critical. So these are just some of the people that uh, uh, have been closely associated with some of the work we've been doing at uh, Viewpoints Research Institute. And um, very few awards actually are given to groups. Uh, and th this is a real mistake in our field because I believe in our field that you not only have to have ideas, you have to get them implemented. And it is often the case that people with ideas are not so good at implementing and so you need to have a kind of a team of different kinds of talents who are able to work together. Uh, one little look back though, it could be, so I, as we, as the term is meant today, I, I made up the term object-oriented programming, but I made it up for something different than the term stands for today. Uh, and what the term stands for today, this could be the 50th anniversary of it. So that's quite surprising to think it might go all the way back to 1961. And it goes back to a very surprising form, which is actually a machine. So there's no object-oriented programming language in 1961 that I'm aware of. I actually started in computing myself in 1961. So there was nothing like an object-oriented programming language back then, but there is a piece of hardware that can most easily be explained to you is that this was a computer hardware that executed uh, a set of instructions that looked like the byte-coded VMs that you're familiar with from Java. And in fact, those byte-coded VMs that Java have came originally because they were the basic instruction set on this machine. So this is one of the first uh, attempts at a, building a higher level machine to reflect the idea in the early 60s that we were going to program in uh, levels of language higher than C. And uh, Bob Barton here uh, invented this machine and sadly the hardware of the day is not as advanced as this machine was. So for those of you who think we have been engaged in steady progress uh, in some form of Darwinian processes that are making things better for us, it's actually quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. In history you can find really incredible geniuses like this man who anticipated so strongly that we can only uh, emulate his ideas in software today. Intel hasn't gotten around to understanding them yet. So this I find really quite sad. On the other hand, uh, it gives you a sense of this person. And if you want to read an interesting paper, probably the shortest, greatest paper ever written in computer science, you can read this one. Written in 1961 by Bob Barton, A New Approach to the Functional Design of a Digital Computer. It's only six pages long and it lays out what uh, a felicitous uh, execution environment for a higher level language would be like and how it would be realized in a computer. This computer was built, by the way, it lived on longest in Germany. The German banking system loved it because it was uncrashable. Why was it uncrashable? Because it was the first hardware or software system to have what we call capabilities today. Uh, an application programmer simply could not write a program that could hurt uh, any other program on the computer. 
that was built directly into the into the hardware of this machine and the reason I'm showing you this just because part of it is everybody should understand the history of our field if we were physicists and we failed to understand what Newton did we should be shot and but in fact in computing we are very happy not to understand what most of the founders of our field actually did so I always like to pick one of them in the generation before me and explain what he did but the reason I brought it up here is that I had a course from this guy this guy was uh, took a leave of absence from Burroughs to come teach at the graduate school I was at and in this course which is about advanced systems design instead of teaching this course he handed out a list of all the papers we should read he said there are a few things known about advanced systems design in 1966 they're written down in these papers and I expect you to read every single one of these papers and understand them and then he said but it is my job to firmly disabuse you of any fondly held ideas you might have brought into this classroom and translated into less flowery English what he proposed to do is to take all of our beliefs about computing and destroy them and that is what this class was the best class I've ever had in a university or graduate school and why was this a good idea well we'll see in a second that the biggest problem we have as human beings is that we confuse our beliefs with reality so we seem to live in a reality here but actually it's a construction that we look at one way and people from another culture might look at it another way and my little dog Watson might look at this whole thing from a completely different point of view and when we treat a construction as reality we're actually binding the kinds of thoughts that we can actually have and worse than that we're picking a tiny part of the past that led to this particular construction as the only past we ever draw on so what this guy did is just demolished everything that we thought including things that he actually believed in so he demolished everything no no proposition was uh, safe and at the end of it we actually were free so we could then learn computing from the point of view of it being simply opinions and a little bit of practice that had been done so far up that way but might not have anything particular to do with uh, a desirable future 